Welcome to Explode Your Coaching Business Podcast. Helping coaches, speakers, and trainers to live their purpose, grow their business, and make an impact in the world. Now, here's your host, Simona Vincenzi. Hello, folks. Uh, how are you doing today? Here is Simona Vincenzi from uh, GDEX, and this is Explode Your Coaching Business Show, the podcast for coaches, speakers, and trainers who want to grow their businesses and make an impact in the world. Today is going to be crazy. Oh, yeah. Today we have Stacy Hall, and we are going to be talking about how to hire teams. We are going to be talking about how to find the right team members. We are going to be talking about how to get people to work for free for you. But before we go into the introduction of Stacy, let me remind you that we have a free training. If you want to, if you are ready to explore your coaching business, go or jump on our website www.gtex.org.uk forward slash start. Now, as I said, we have Stacey Hall today. She's the creator of the Cheat2B, Strategic Action Planning Process. And she will share her tips for attracting and expanding and retaining passionately successful team to to achieve their goals with velocity and ease. Now, Stacey taught strategic action plan process to Joe Vitale, right? Brian Tracy, what? Mark Victor Hansen, and they endorsed uh, Jack Canfield, and they endorsed uh, also her books. So we are talking about someone who has been around and really works with the big ones. Now, also, today, uh, you can ask any question that you want. If you want to connect with me, you can connect at uh, simone at gtex.org.uk. That's my personal email. So right now, what you want you to do is to get ready, buckle up, and uh, let's start the music. Stay until the end. Ciao. Here we go, and uh, we are live every day. Another episode, number 24 of Explode, your coaching business show. And today we are here with Stacey Hall. How are you, Stacey? I'm fantastic and so thrilled and honored to be invited to be with you today. Oh, wow. I love the word already. Thrilled, honored. You know, some, I'm Italian, so sometimes my <laughs> vocabulary is not that good. And when I hear we're like thrilled, it's like, yeah, not many people use that word. So I, I like it already. Um, so Stacey, uh, I want to know from you in particular, we are talking today about building a team and finding your superhero team. Now, question for you is what got you into having a team? Because is it not better doing everything by yourself? It's so funny that you would say that. I was just, I I did a presentation a couple of days ago at the Invincible Conference. And the very first thing I said when I came on stage was, okay, everybody, help me fill in the blank. If you want something done right, you have to do it yourself, right? Uh That's what we've been taught. Well, if we want an abundant life and we want a prosperous business, I can tell you by personal experience, it's not possible to do it ourselves. All by ourselves, we have a limited amount of time, we have a limited amount of energy, we have a limited amount of wisdom, and we have a limited amount of resources that's available to each individual. It's abundant, but it's still limited. And when we max out that ability to utilize and we don't have other people there to draw from to support us, for us to support them. There's no time to take any rest stops, to rejuvenate, to become more creative again. And we burn out. And I am the poster child for that. Wow. And I think you, you are tapping on something like a great point here. In particular, because uh, as you said, we have been told that we got to do it ourselves. We are really understanding, which is uh, incredibly, incredibly, incredibly slow. So have you been, oh, have you always been this way? Just, you know, hiring teams and collaborating no. with people. So t- tell us a bit more. No. When did you start it? <laughs> no, no, that's what I'm saying. I'm the poster child for what not to do. But if, as a result of doing it, I, I'm really the epitome, if you will, of attempting to do it myself but believing that I expected that people would show up. Yeah. Um, I wound up in bed for two years and three months with a debilitating illness because I expended wow. everything I had and never, never replenished because it seemed to me that people were always letting me down. That was a complaint, right? We talk about our longstanding complaints yeah. that get in our way. Well, that was mine. I had a belief system 
drummed into me because that's the way I was raised by a mother who didn't believe that anybody else could do anything and made it clear that even when I was doing chores, I wasn't living up to her standards. And so I just, you know, I, I thought I was a people person. I had a business partner. I had people that we hired to help us. But you know what? I attracted people who would live up to my expectation. Right. My true expectation was they would let me down. So they- I have a question for you because uh, you said that you were in bed for three years, right? Yes, yes. And uh, how was it for you having that experience? Because I remember whenever when we met for the first time and you shared with me that we were in bed for three years, it's like, three years you don't seem you, you don't seem like a quiet you know like kind of the quiet person or it's like, it seems like a very active loves doing stuff so how was there for you spending those three years in bed it was hell it was hell and um at first so let me tell the truth at first i felt like because i couldn't do anything else i relinquished the shares of my company right. when i say at first i'd say maybe for the first few months it felt like I finally got the rest that I had been asking for. Wow. And I was so ill that I could care less whether the business I had started fell down into the rabbit hole, what my former business partner was doing. I just didn't have the energy to care. But then, as I started to get a little bit stronger, um, I did start to care. And then I was embarrassed. And then I was upset with myself that I couldn't have figured out how to do things differently. And then I got very angry at the people that I relinquished the company to. And why did they let me do that when I started the company and they knew that they had no business having the company? I, I mean, I'm, hopefully I'm talking to some people out there who... Yeah, yeah, yeah. I'm sure, I'm sure you're talking to some people out there. <laughs> okay. And so I went through I, all the, the stages of grief, right? Yeah. And then what happened, when I say it was from January of 2005, January 28th, 2005 to be exact, yeah. to March of 2007, I don't know the exact date that I started to be able to get up and stay out. I know what transpired that made that possible. But during that ye- those years of transformation, um, I began to realize that the doctors I was seeking out weren't helping me. And the alternative practitioners weren't helping me. And I had to come to terms with there was a common denominator. Right. The common denominator was me. I wasn't getting what I wanted. And that was the day, the day in March of 2007, that I gave it up. I surrendered and I had a screaming match with God. You know, a screaming one light, basically. (laughs) And... And who anybody won? knows me, yeah, I just said this is this is who the won? Who won the screaming match? Uh, well, God won. You got one. Won. <laughs> I mean, I like surprise! Say, as I said, I surrendered, but I didn't do it like in a quiet, meek way. I just went. You've got two choices. You either take me because I'm not being a wife to my husband, and I'm not being productive yeah. to society, and or. You show me what I've done that has kept me here because what I've done in the world has not been bad. I've only attempted to be a good person. Yeah. And I actually did hear, I mean, I'm, I'm, there have been a few times in my life where I have something got my attention. Like this morning I was telling you where I was told back up my computer, which I'm very glad I did. Yeah. Well, this, one of those times as well where I heard relax we've heard you, we'll send you information. And information started to come. And as it did, I said, okay, I'm going to write this down. I'm going to do it. And if it winds up producing results, I'll save it and share it with other people. And that's how I came to write my book. So so everything I teach, Chi to be, C-H-I-T-O-B-E, as in energy to be well, to be successful, to be attractive to other people. Which I love the title of the book, by the way, because I know we had this conversation about the title of the book. It's like, Chi to be, what is that? It's like, Chi the energy, sounds so obvious, right? (laughs) But Okay, so now it seems that from there, you just came out to read as a new person with new priorities, new way of uh, living and uh, seeing life. So how how did the, 
did it, finding the right team impacted your life? And then we're going to talk about how to find the right team. But what was the impact when you found the right team? And the reason why I'm asking that, it is because you find this, uh, you know, this personal development word, which uh, is made mainly from very angry speakers that tell you to work uh, 15, 20 hours a day. And if there are not 24 hours in a day, you want to have a negotiation with God and negotiate two more hours so you can get more things done, right? So what was the impact in, in your life, I mean, that team? Well, okay, so what happened was I, after all of that, recognizing that it was my belief system that I couldn't be supported right, and right. choosing to give that up. And I have lots of tools that came to me, um, some that other people created and they came to me, some that I received through personal inspiration, uh, divine inspiration, uh, to be able to release that. And as I started to release that, I became more able to be a person who could receive support. And then it was my responsibility to figure out what kind of support would be perfect for me. So not duplicating right. myself, adding on to what I have the ability to do. And it started from there and making lists, which I talk about in my book, of the qualities of the people that will co-create a team with me so that we're not all the same person. And then that requires being more flexible, more adaptable, yeah. more willing to honor people's gifts so that they can make their contributions and they can be received. It also means learning how to speak what I want in a way that other people can understand, not getting aggravated when they don't. Is really is really interesting. I think when you're talking right now about communication, it just makes me. It reminds me. I, right now, we are we are also building our team and expanding with the, the people that are supporting us, and also our uh, full time employees that are working with us. And I remember that the first thing, most important thing I'm aware of is actually taking responsibility to the outcome of my employees. So. If they don't do a great job, maybe 80% of the time, because I'm not hiring idiots, like they are good. Yeah. yeah. So if they don't make a good job, it means that uh, I haven't expressed myself well in what I wanted, how the things were going to be, the process or the system that they needed to follow. And as a result, it didn't work in the way I wanted to work, right? Exactly. So yes. I think that the question is coming to me right now is that, how do you manage once uh, now you let go of this, uh, which is step number one, I think, as you said, get rid of this belief that uh, I cannot be supported. I got to do everything by myself. Step number one. Step number two, how do you communicate well with the people and how do, as well do you manage when things are not going in the way you want? I'm going to honor Don Miguel Ruiz right here because in my book, I, I think the best communication system I have ever found is the four agreements. We okay. practice. So that's exactly what we do. My team, I have teams in different areas. And truly, as I'm sitting here, I'm thinking, you know, that one would have been a good idea to invite the teams on because then we could all talk about how we do this with each other. So can you, shout out can to you all tap, my team Can members. you tap on the four agreements for people yes. that don't know what the four agreements are? Absolutely. The very first one is to be impeccable with our word, and that has so many branches off of it. So let's talk about a few. Right. The first is that we're very careful about what comes out of our mouth. Right before this call, I had a coaching session with a client, and she said, I've been working hard at and trying to, and I said to her, okay, first off, that might be the way it feels. Is that how you want it to continue to be, that you have to work hard at what you're doing? Because if so, you want to change what you're saying. So what comes out of our mouth must be exactly what we desire to attract to us. So that's number one about impeccability. Another is speaking from I. Too often, I hear people saying when they're talking about experience, in fact, celebrities do this all the time when they're being interviewed, yeah. and they'll say, well, you know, when you're kissing Brad Pitt, like, <laughs> no, I, I can't yeah, remember I the last time I kissed Brad Pitt. Brad Pitt. 
Um, it would have been far more powerful to say, well, when I was kissing Brad Pitt, this is what it was like. And then we could be right there with them in their experience, right. not separated. That people think that when we say you, we're including them. But if they've not had the experience we've had, they actually feel more excluded. Mm -hmm. So those are two ways to be impeccable. And I communicate from I with my clients and with my team members. So Simone, I'm going to jump before we do the other three into how do we communicate with each other? Yeah. Well, I say what I would like to see occur. And then I say to them, can you tell me what you heard me say? So I'm sure that I communicated well. Yeah. It's that simple. Mm -hmm. Most people go along assuming that what came out of their mouths was so clear that anybody else would have to know exactly yep. what to do. Yep. No. no sure. I don't know what they're processing. I don't know what it reminds me of. I don't know what they've let in while I was talking. So I want to say that very first. Take the time to ask somebody what they heard you say. It is not condescending. It is kind. Yeah, I, I think it's really, really powerful. And I want to make a step back when you were talking about uh, talking, saying I, I experienced that, I've, be, I've gone through this. And training yourself uh, because uh, it's a way also to give yourself, take personal responsibility 100% of the things that you feel, of the things that you say, of your thoughts, of your actions. And I remember, I don't know if you ever heard of Findorn. Uh, maybe you had. Findorn is a spiritual community which is actually based in Scotland. Yes, yes absolutely. Right. right. So I've been to, and that was my awakening. That was the first uh, experience that I had with the spiritual world. And it was doing an, what they call the experience week, which is an introductory week in, the, in Findorn village. And it was incredible. And I remember that the rule, there were a few rules. One of the rules was uh, never say, well, let's say, you're talking to someone, but when you're talking about your experience, never say you. You always say I. And you had other people that if you were saying, you know, when you you think that, said no, you don't think that. I'm assuming you're thinking that, right? Okay. So we had people that were keeping each other accountable in uh, if we were saying I or we were saying you. They remember that was the first training. And now I see where it's come from, from the fourth principle. From the well, and, and I, I only say that that's where I learned it. I don't know if it was more ancient than the Toltec no. wisdom. But that's what Don Miguel wrote in his book, The Four Agreements. And I, I, that many people have the same experience I did at the beginning, that the reason we don't say I is that it doesn't yeah. sound helpful. We've been told to be modest. Well, okay, I'm not going around bragging about everything I've done. I'm simply owning, I feel this way, I think this way, I discovered this. I'm feeling like this might be what you're saying and I'm not sure. I, I'm owning mine instead of projecting onto someone else. Right, brilliant. Okay, let's, let's jump on the other agreements. Well, the others go a lot faster. So go one is, it. another one is don't make assumptions. And people go, well, how do you stop making assumptions? There's only one way. Ask questions. And if, if it's, I'm going to say this one is, was a challenge for me at the beginning, because if we don't recognize that we're making assumptions, how can we ask questions? So it requires some awareness that when someone says something to me, I may at first have to say back to them, yeah. This is what I heard you say. Is that what you meant? Because if they don't ask me to tell them what they heard, then it falls on me to tell them what I heard. And is this correct? Right. So now, okay, this is very, very powerful. Uh, okay. Now, what I would love to ask you is. Yes. I, now, we talked about the, the four agreements and we looked at uh, from this ancient wisdom, uh, how to communicate with teams. How do we find the right team members or the right people that we need to in our business? Because I, I think that, uh, you know, when someone starts, uh, maybe doesn't know where to start or doesn't know really what their priorities are. That's right. If they really need a team member or they don't need a team member, if that's really important or not. So how do you define, you say, actually, I need this person, need this person, need this person, need this person. Okay. Well, let's start with, I believe that everybody knows when they need help. 
okay? And the reason being is they feel overwhelmed, they feel frustrated, they're not having time to do the things that they say are really important to them because they feel like they should be doing something else. Yes. So we all know when we could use help. So stopping right there and go, okay, these are the activities that I could use support with instead of going straight to, I could use help, but there's no one around, right? Like cancel that, cancel all of that. But that is what I used to say. Yeah. So it's, oh, if I had somebody, this is what I'd want them to help me with. So start there, then start listing the activities that could be supportable. Yeah. The ones that we're only doing because we feel we don't have anyone else, but the ones we'd be very happy to give up if we could, yeah, and then start identifying a list, and I call this a strategic attraction plan, not a strategic action plan, an attraction plan, identify the qualities of the kinds of people that we'd want to have come on board to help us with that. So that's the first step. Right. I, I really like it. And I'm going to, to stop it there in the first step just to make sure that we are all on the same page. Yes. So really identifying... Uh, uh, what are the so you said it is a kind of intuitive I know that if you're if you're I'm lacking maybe in one area of my business uh, and I need help in that specific part and then it's about finding so what are the things that I need help with and what kind of skills do I need and then uh, reaching out and getting rid of uh, no there is no one out there that can help me or I don't have the budget which is going to be something that we are going to be talking as well right, because I think right. someone is starting out uh, I don't have the budget. How can we overcome that? But before we, that's the easiest that's part. Easy. So uh, let, let's let, let's leave people hanging. Okay, okay. That's, that's our cliffhanger for later. Now, I would love to ask you, what is your favorite CD and why? Sometimes oh, you, my favorite CD. Uh, okay, well, um, this is I have two, and they're equal. Yes. So one is a shout out to Joey Malotti, M E L O T T I, another Italian guy who created the Chi to Be theme song. So that's Chi to Be is obviously why it's number one. And then after that, I would say Stevie Nicks. I'm, I'm not thinking about the title, but it was her first solo album. And I like spent hours when it came out. Yeah. Like it's in my cell. So I'm going to say, yay, Stevie Nicks, her first solo album. Brilliant. Okay. So there, these are the songs, right? Uh, well, um, she did um, Leather and Lace with Tom, Pe Tom Petty, yep. and she did something with Don Henley. Like, I'm not going to remember the names of the songs. I can remember some lyrics. If you ask me to sing, I'm going to say no. Uh, no, I'm not asking no. you to sing. I, I want to ask you is why. Okay. Well, first of all, Chi to Be, it, it makes also why Chi to Be. And so you had someone creating a song for your book. Yes. Well, so, tell, me more. tell me more. How did it come about? It, it was complete serendipity, not even right. synchronicity. So uh, Valerie Malati is one of the attraction masters, she masters in my book. She went through all of my coach training. Yeah. And we recorded the audio coaching sessions that go along with the book at Joey and Valerie's studio here in Las right. Vegas, Nevada. Joey um, is a, an accomplished musician who's been with Barry Manilow for years and years and many other big names and he actually did the producing of the audio coaching program. Wow. And he was really fascinated by what he heard coming out of the coaching sessions. He got inspired and in between when he was producing and editing, he, mm -hmm. he came up with a song. And so it's out on, uh, I think it's on iTunes. I know it's on CD baby. Yeah. Anybody Heard of CD Baby? Yeah, yeah I heard um, of CD Baby. Yeah, so under Joey Milotti, the Chi to Be theme song, and it is it. It'll rock your world. It's a very happy, very no, find happy a CD song. Baby or iTunes the Chi to Be song. Make sure, yeah. guys, you go there, listen to this song because it's going to rock your world. <laughs> yeah, it's, he's doing a great job. So I mean, yeah. Oscar, well, not Oscar, a Grammy-winning, you know, of artist. 
who um, just was inspired to write a song for Chief. Wow. And it's really interesting how the power of coaching sometimes can unlock this moment of, uh, you know, clarity or creativity. I found that most of the time after a coaching session, I'm, okay, full of ideas. And that's where really my creative juice start flowing. Or if I'm at an event and I'm just there in that, uh, creating that space for my mind to say, go and create, go feel free and then we let's see what, so some creation are like really did you just say that okay maybe not or <laughs> other creation okay let's pick that one uh, which is beautiful okay let's let's go back uh, on uh, the so uh, actually the question that i asked you as well was uh, your favorite city that we started talking about songs and it was fine but the question i asked you was uh, what is your favorite city and why okay so it was well i if you're talking music CD, it is no, no, CD. 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 Town. CD. So, so again, right, right. This is a pronunciation. Oh, oh um, okay. Well, there's only one. the number one is La Jolla, California. And it is because of being by the ocean, to be able to go down and be by the seals. It is so very walkable. It is so very beautiful. Um, my body just is happy when I'm there. And it, to me, the colors, the hills, the rolling hills, yeah. the sea, it, it's just got everything for me. Wow. wow. Okay. Thank you very much. I appreciate that. It's a bit more of an insight of what you like and uh, what is like being Stacey Hall. <laughs> yeah. <laughs> no. yeah, well, and I went all into all this music because I like <laughs> CD. <laughs> But oh, is, is another insight on what it is to be Stacey Hall. Here we go. Okay, Stacey. Now, we've been talking about uh, limitation. So we, now we know how to identify the gaps that we need to, to, to get the team and uh, to, to get the right team members. Now, limitations. I don't have the time to train a team. I don't know how to train a team. I don't have the money to train a team. How does it work? How did you came over that? And what are you teaching your students? Okay, well, uh, first off, I think we just demonstrated beautifully what I was talking about before is asking a question, which I didn't, I didn't think to ask. I made an assumption of what you were saying. And so <laughs> let's just honor that. And it just goes to prove how, you know, in this, we could be talking past each other. Well, this is why creating the list of the qualities that are required is if we know that we're not going to have time to train. So, for example, for Chi to be, I have a, there is a, I'm not going to say I have, but I did attract a whole team of people. I have somebody who manages LinkedIn. I have somebody who manages Instagram, somebody who manages Twitter, somebody who manages my website. I primarily manage Facebook because I love it and I'm on it all the time anyway. Mm -hmm. Well, when I was looking at getting support with all of those, in my list of qualities, I said, all right, the LinkedIn person would either have to really understand LinkedIn or be so excited about having the opportunity to learn LinkedIn that all I'd have to do is send them the trainings that come by me because we get trainings in LinkedIn all the time, right? Yeah the email that this person would want to open them up and watch them and actually p apply them. Same with Twitter, same with Instagram. So when I was interviewing them, that's what I asked right away. Talk to me about your experience with each of these. So that's the first question to always ask somebody is talk to me about your experience with creating Excel spreadsheets. Talk to me about your experience in developing websites. Talk to me about your experience and then stop and listen instead of having expectations listen and is that is that something specific you want you're looking for in the listening you like is there something that you are specifically looking for that you want no, to well, that's what I'm saying. no I'm, I'm listening to see if what they say matches what i desire okay that's, that's what i'm looking for is there a match here and if I expect them to say it in there in a way that's the way I would say it, I might get very disappointed. So I'm listening for what they're saying. Now, there is one much bigger overarching question, and I'm going to bring that in here, and that is 
understanding what is the major goal that is in someone's life. What is the major goal that they intend to achieve before they leave the earth? Hmm. So that is far more important to me than whether they can manage Twitter or not. And you may say, well, what difference does it make? Well, I want to know what that goal is and then find out, okay, well, if you're going to spend time on Twitter on behalf of Chi to B, how does that match with your goal? Because I can promise you this, people often are looking at their short term and they'll go, yeah, I want to learn how to use Twitter, so I'll do it. But then what I found when I didn't ask them about their big goal, when something from their big goal showed up in their lives and get, got their attention, that's where they went. And all of a sudden I was yep. still back here going, wait a second, I thought you were going to do Twitter for me. <laughs> no, big goal will always win out unless the two of them are connected together. If they say to me, my doing Twitter for you is going to help me learn this so that I can then do it for my big goal. And we have an agreement on the number of hours. And we right. also agree to a short amount of time for, uh, let's say, a probationary period or a trial period. I don't really like the word trial, but an opportunity to play, explore, and discover together to make sure it really yeah. works. And knowing that that's what it is, like we didn't just both just jump into the basket and now we're going to be yeah. bestie friends for the rest of our lives. But gently learning how to communicate with each other. So it takes a good three months. And too sure. often, people get, they get irritated. Somebody shows up, and they're not doing what they want right now, and not thinking about the fact that any goal has to go through a seeding process, a sprouting process, yeah. before it can get to a blooming process. So those are all the tips and techniques, and I'm proud to say that I do walk my talk on that. Oh, and which is great. So is, uh, first of all, asking uh, them, uh, what is your experience? So yes. you see, actually, if they're just talking crap or they yeah. are, know what they're talking about. Exactly. Or if they don't know it yet, their willingness to learn it. Yes. And the second step is, uh, how is that this task that you're doing, this day-to-day -day task that you're going to, how is that linked with your long-term goal? Because I agree with you. If you get someone, whether it's someone, a volunteer that can do this for an exchange or if someone who does it for paid, then uh, it, it, as soon as they find something which is in alignment with the stuff, they're going to leave. Right. Of course, if the pay is really high, there might be a bit of battle, but it's an internal battle where they would love to do something else and they don't want to do that anymore. So they're not going to be as productive or they're not going to enjoy as much what they're going to do for you. And right. I think that as a small business owner, we have much more flexibility. You know, when you're working in a large company, they need to have those certain structures with people doing those things. Otherwise, the company doesn't work. And, but for us, we have small businesses, we have much more flexibility and we can allow other people much more flexibility. So I've been, for example, just a, we just hired a, a full-time person within GTEx, our awesome Wang. Shout out to Wang. Hey, Wang, you're hey, awesome. Hey, Wang, thank you for your support. Uh, she is awesome. We have been working part-time with Wang for the past two years, and she's on board. She is very proactive. She always wants to learn. And I remember every now and then we have these meetings and say, okay, even if we are paying you, but what kind of skills would you like to learn for yourself, for your life? Something that even if you leave us, then you say, I can use those skills. Because I think that my aim is to train people, it's not to keep people. If they want to stay, they will stay. But what I want to give them is all the training, all the opportunities that they need in order to give, a, give me a great job. And then also, if they want to leave, become the best employees that they can be or starting their own stuff. Yes. So uh, we had these meetings and I asked her, what kind of things do you want to learn? And she said, I want to learn Instagram. I said, perfect. I, let's do a challenge. If you help me get, I'll give you my Instagram for three months and I want you to get me 10,000 followers in three months. The way you do that is up to you. What do you need? I need the training. Here's the training. I need these tools. Here's the tool. Blah, blah. And she's completely charged of the process. If she reached this goal, which is quite ambitious, I'll take them out for dinner with their, their mom, and the, the daughter, and the, the grandma. And 
because uh, 10,000 followers in three months is, is quite a good task. So she needs to be on top of it. Yeah. Right. So these are the kind of things that they are small, but they can make a massive difference in terms of how the staff is, the loyalty that the staff can, can have towards you and how long they will work with you. So, yeah. so what, what, how, how do you inspire loyalty in your staff then? That okay, we well, do I do it a little differently than you. And that's what I was going to say. And the person who just came on board to support me with Instagram, if she says to me, will you take me to dinner when I get there? Yes, of course I will. It's not where I don't set the goal. Hmm. I don't set that goal. We have an overarching goal that she to be will be a number one New York Times bestseller. And anybody who comes on board the social media team, that's the overall goal that they're working toward. Right. And I ask them, first off, I have give them time to get to know she to be and what we've been doing. And so that's, again, where that three-month period comes in yeah. to find out what's possible, what we've been doing, what's working, what isn't working, investing time in training before they really start getting involved and in changing things. We, we meet every week so that they can give me feedback, ask me questions, or just celebrate their successes. And do and you meet, do you meet every week? Sorry if I interrupted. Do you meet every week? Every week. With, uh, your, with a specific team member or with the yes. whole team together? Per, to, per team member. Per we, team at member. one time I did all and there wasn't enough time. So I do a half an hour with every team member Perfect. a week. And, and it doesn't always take a half an hour. Like today, we were talking Instagram. It only took about 10 minutes. But at least that's our focus time. I know that it's important for me to be ready for that person to show up and not be distracted by anything else. It's their time to come prepared so that they have an entire week. Um, they report. We, we have a, a group on Facebook, a private group. And every week, they update their stats. But the goal that's inside of the overarching goal to get she to be the number one on the New York Times bestseller, yeah. they come up with the goal for their own social media. So, I mean, I could say 10,000 members, but I don't know whether it's possible or not. And I'm concerned that if they're doing a goal that I created, now they're accountable to me and not to their self. So in she to be, we're only accountable to ourselves. For achieving what we say we want to achieve. And from my point of view, as long as we're moving forward, that works for me. And I know that once they've gained some success, so let's say their goal is, let's say, 100 this week, right? 100 new followers. They do that consistently. They'll be ready to increase the goal. And then they'll be ready to increase the goal. And so talking about loyalty is not setting goals that are so big that people get demoralized and dejected and feel like they're not making a good job. Because I did all of that in the past. And right. you've, been work you've been working with one for two years. So this isn't like she's just come on board. Yeah. But that's what I, I would do. People come on board and go, okay, this is what I want you to do. And they were dropping like flies. Because it's like, I can't do that. I'm not, I'm, I'm not ready to do that. Mm -hmm. Okay. Well, then let's slow down and you tell me. What do you think is possible? And I'm good with that. As long as they're doing exactly what they choose to do and it's moving us forward, that's great. Because I know over the course of time, we'll get to those 10,000. And then we'll get to 100,000. And then we'll get to a million. Right. Got it. Got it. And I think it's a very good, refreshing way to see to have a, them, the, your employees also, people that are helping you out, to set their own goals. And it's something that I generally never thought of that because I, I got my goals and I got to achieve them, so other people. But I'll, I'll give it a go. I'll give it a go. And then I'll let you know how it works. <laughs> I would love to hear. I, I would because they're independent contractors. They're not employees of mine. And I want them to feel it is their business, that they're bringing their best skills to me. And in exchange, I'm bringing my best skills to them. And so we're two equals. Yeah, working towards the same goal. Yeah, and uh, I, I love this system. So as soon as uh, Wang finishes this challenge, because I know she likes challenges, <laughs> so I gave her this. Uh, we've been working, and I think uh, if you, as you said, if you someone starts and you immediately give them a huge task, that's too much. It can put a lot of pressure. And there are some people 
that thrive under pressure and there are other people that crumble under pressure. They actually drop. For me, for example, if someone gives me quite like a very difficult task, I'll do whatever I can because I feel challenged, I feel inspired, I feel motivated. Someone says, okay, do this. I'm like, mm, really? So it's really, it's really interesting. So what I'm going to do, I'm going to test with Wang next time. So Wang, because you are listening, because she's going to edit this podcast, so she's going to listen to it. I said, Wang, next time you are set, we reached the 10,000 on Instagram, then you reach the, you set the goal for Twitter next time. Okay, deal. <laughs> but you know what? You actually are letting her do that because you gave her the, your overarching goal is 10,000. Yes. Mine is number one on the New York Times bestseller list. And then you said to Wang, I don't care how you do it. Yeah. So she's having to set her own goals in order to get to the 10,000. So you actually, the truth of the matter is you actually are doing exactly what I'm doing. And you have loyalty with each other that is a foundation on which you can set that kind of a large goal. So that's very, yes. very fabulous. I think that uh, the, the, the more time you spend to also know people, and know them as people, not just as workers, as yes. contractors, but as uh, friends, the closer the relationship, the, the more you ask about how is your mom doing? How's your dad doing? How's your daughter doing? Uh, what, kind, what did you do on the weekend? And it might be just a question every now and then, but at least you know something about them. You know what's important for them. You know, you know what drives them. And then yes. the line, uh, your goals to their goals as well and to their personal life, which is uh, really important. It, it's everything. It's fine. I thought that you were about to say what I talk about in the book, which is every one of us, whether it's uh, I'm in a network marketing company and so I have teams over there too. Yeah. We all know what's the most important thing in the world to us. And we know that because that's what I ask people to ask. It's the, I want to know. Push to come to shove. Why do you get out of bed? And the only way you would know that is if it was taken away from you, then it would be very challenging to get out of bed. And I want everybody who interacts with me to have more of that experience as a result of being with me. And that is what we talk about. So when we get on the call, I'm going to tell you, this is how what it looks like. Is, hi, hi. All right, tell me what's your greatest goal and what's the most important thing in the world to you. It, before we talk about anything else, we represent that for each other. Wow. Wow, it's not like, how, what did you do on the weekend? What is your greatest goal and what is most important for you? Is that, yeah, <laughs> that's a good, way to to set, a good way to set the tone. Yeah, and, and, and if inside of that then someone says well the most important thing in the world to me is this and i didn't really have an experience of that this weekend because of da 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 da, da. okay great how can i support you to get back to feeling that because that's the only thing that really matters if i'm if i really want to have a close relationship and i do with the people on my team because it's not fun to constantly re attract people yeah I prefer long-term relationships that work for everybody. Then I want to know what is most important. Are you experiencing it? Are you not experiencing it? And how can I be of support to you to have more of it? It's really, it's really fascinating. And that reminds me as well of the experience that I had with Wang. Uh, for example, where one of the reasons why we got her full-time is because she's working for a company that we use for, for outsourcing some of our work and she was getting other clients. And I said, I don't want any of these clients getting her full-time because she's too awesome. So <laughs> I said, okay, now you work full-time for us and then let's eliminate the competition because we want... And, and as you said, when you're investing as well time and and energy and training into a person and when they leave is all to do that back again and there are months and months of training and they will have to train again and we will have to find someone else so creating a situation where the two parties are completely happy is uh, the most important thing and this leads me to the next question which is uh, did it ever happen that you had a, a very because i don't know if that ever happened to you 
but uh, you can have a very close relationship with a, a, an employee or uh, with a person of your team. Is there, do you have any example of uh, something that happened that uh, really got you and a member of your team really close? Uh, like, you know, sometimes you can create this bond which are super strong. Is never have happen or do you allow that to happen? Every single, that's exactly what my goal is and every single person. And the way it happens is by knowing what's important to them. And so, for example, um, I, I'm not going to give too much detail yeah. because it would be easy to find out who this person is. But I'm just going to say, as one example of how it works many times, if I'm starting to notice that I'm having more conversations with somebody just about she to be than about their personal life or their other business interests, I stop and I ask, what's happening in those other areas of your life? Let's not talk about she to be today. And so in one particular case, the person was letting me know that um, her other business, she has a business partner who happens to be her husband, was feeling that she was giving too much time to Chi to be. And so we had that conversation because I said, are you putting in more hours than you had planned to? And in a particular case she was because we were doing a special project. Yeah. And I said, so I'm just curious, did you let this person know in advance that that might happen? And they had not. And I said, okay, this has got to be our new agreement. If you're going to put in more time for TV, you have to make sure that everyone else yeah. on your other teams is okay with that before you say yes to me. Because it is really important that our teams be strong. And if somebody's resentful, that energy is going to leach over into your enthusiasm for Chi to be, and it's going to diminish it. You might as well have not spent that extra time. Very powerful. Thank you very much for sharing, Stacey. I think uh, that uh, that was a great example as well of great leadership because uh, what you said, you, may, you make your team also almost more important than uh, your project or yourself because at the end of the day, your project or yourself can just work uh, if the team works. So, and that's a great example on how you did that. And that leads me to another question, which is, uh, and then we talk about uh, what if you don't have the money? How can you do that without money? But we leave that for last. So you guys listen until the end. Uh, what is uh, sometimes, uh, it didn't ever happen that you created this, such a relation which was very strong, but the person wasn't the right fit for the company. Yes. So because we have, there is a bit, probably have heard of that many times, hire slow, fire fast. Now, I remember when I started, for me, it was a struggle just to say, you're not the right person. I'm sorry, this is not working out because I didn't want to create a friction in our personal relationships. Now I'm fine with that. I'm like, I'm putting clear boundaries at the beginning, but before it was very difficult. So did it ever happen to you and how did you get over that? Um, well, I, I'm going to say sometimes people can still be a person but I'm going to move on to what's next. So I'll say that also happens. Yeah. But in terms of somebody not knowing their fit, because I do everything that I've said that I do, which is I have my list, the qualities, we have a formal agreement when they come in, this is what you'll do. I also have in the agreement that at any point I can terminate or they can terminate. And so that's discussed right from the start. And here's what usually, well, I can't say just usually, this is what happens all the time now because I'm so clear on what I expect. The person knows when they're not meeting it and they can't blame me because they were supposed to create their own goals. And if they haven't done that, then we've got nothing to talk about really when we get together each week. Yeah. If they do it and they're not meeting it before I'm ever able to talk about it, they usually take themselves out because they know why they're not me. So they realize mm. that it really wasn't for them because there's a lot, there are many people out there who don't want to be left out. I don't know if you've found this, but there are personalities that they see an opportunity, they'll jump on it, 
yeah. without really being sure that this is a fit for them. All they know is they have to go grab it. Yeah. And that's what they're there for. And so I've learned that. I've had to accept that, which is, again is why the short-term agreements and that we can both release without it meaning anything and we can go on and still be friends. And so in those weekly calls, when I'm checking in, so how's it going for you? What's happening? Are you still yeah. having fun? And they start telling me, you know what? It really isn't. I just say, okay, cool. It's great. And, and I actually in the book, in Chapter 10, a little shameless promotion here. Go for it. I have a process called the solution process where there's four questions to determine whether you're going to do something or you're not going to do something. And knowing it's a, it's a form of muscle testing. If you're familiar with that, yep. but there's questions that your body will have reactions to. And at the end you just check what was the one that your body reacted the strongest to. And then, you know, the answer. And so if they're still like on the fence, I'll do that process with them. And then it's very clear. And we both agree, and I just bless them to go on to what's next for them in their life. Uh, thank you for sharing, Stacey, because I found that for it was very, for me, it was very, very tough letting go of some people that weren't the right people for that. And also because uh, I'm very, I, w I pretend I'd standards. That's uh, how I am. And I give uh, everything I can. I give 200%. I expect that 200% in attitude, not in skills. The skills can be learned. So I found that when there was a person that uh, was a bit of a lazy ass and I don't go, go along well with lazy asses, then I said, <laughs> it was like, no way. But it took me so much <sighs> strength and courage to just go there. And now, now it's fine. Yeah. <laughs> I'm like, no, no, mate, you, you, you're not the right fit. Either, either you you wake up a bit more or it's not gonna work that has been really interesting so now we are in the last 10 minutes of the interview so far it's been awesome and uh, for everyone who is listening there are the links of the books g2b make sure you go and grab a copy so we can help stacy get g2b become number one best selling uh, new York time bestseller uh, if you don't have money or you're fine you're just starting out uh, very tight on cash. How can you get those right people in? Okay, very, I'm going to tell you what I chose to do, and there's really only one way. If there's no funds, then it's about not going into a lack poverty conversation, being in a wealth minded situation to know the value of what we have to offer. And so I realized early on, that because I wanted people to live and walk and talk the Chi to be process, because how could I have somebody who's doing something for Chi to be who's not in alignment with it, right? That meant that I would have to do some coaching anyway. So I thought to myself, huh, well, I charge $300 an hour for private coaching. I, you know, I have programs that are less expensive than that. Yeah. But if I'm doing private coaching, it starts at $300 an hour. Well, I'm going to be training this person, and the tips I'm going to teach them are going to make them more successful in every area of their life. Why would I be paying them to receive that coaching? So all I did is I looked at $300 an hour. Okay, what would I normally pay somebody who's doing, let's say, social media work, right? Yeah. So... 10 to $15 an hour is the going rate for somebody who's average. Yeah. $25 an hour for somebody who's spectacular. Yeah. I took $25 an hour because I want spectacular people, divided 300 by 25, and that's the number of hours that um, I, that's our exchange, that they'll put in that mm -hmm. number of hours every week in order to get one hour of coaching from me. And so that's how we do it. And that's an equal exchange. That's me honoring their skills at the highest value, me honoring my skills at a price that is highest for me right now, although I intend to raise that very soon. <laughs> and, and then there's the match. Yeah. And then I expect them to value themselves at that point. And so it, that is how I exchange. And any coach who does not exchange their coaching 
for the people on their team to give their skills, that's just that's that just doesn't make sense to me. You're, we're coaches. Let's share our skills and receive something in exchange. Always has to be an energy exchange. It's brilliant. Thank you very much for that, Stacey, because uh, is um, a lot of people find that they have this resistance with bartering or they just barter in the wrong way uh, where they don't value themselves and they don't want to value other people, so it doesn't work. Now, I found personally from personal experience, uh, it worked much better when money was involved than when it, that wasn't involved. What has been your experience? Did you find when you were paying people, they were sticking in more around uh, or uh, tell me a bit more about that because I'm really uh, curious to hear your opinion. And it could be my belief system. I'm saying I used to pay. And um, what I can tell you is not only was I paying them, but then I'd have to coach them. I wound up on the short end of the stick as a result. And they didn't stick around any longer. Well, that's not true. They stuck around longer, but they weren't any more energetic or enthusiastic. Right. They were there for the money, not for the experience. They weren't invested in my goal. They gave me lip service that they were. And so I'm going to say that at least on the social media team, for the number of hours, I have not, in, in the five years that Cheetah Bee's been around, I've attracted people to the social media team. Some people stay longer or shorter, but while they're here, they are always fully enthusiastic because when I'm coaching them, I'm coaching them on what's important to them. They are getting as much value from me as I am, you know, as they're giving to me. And $25 an hour, even at that price for the number of hours, money goes like this. Yeah. But you know what the biggest motivator is of people around the world so many studies done it's being given a sense of appreciation and value yeah and i make sure that's what i do with coaching sessions and what they tell me is that is worth far wow Thank you, Stacey. It's uh, really, it's really giving me another perspective, and uh, we we all grow and learn through different perspectives. So, for everyone who says I don't have the money, I cannot pay someone, snap out from this scarcity mindset and say, actually, I have a skill. I'm a coach or a speaker. I have a skill that can be for high value for some people. So if all those people that have the skill that are required and they want to exchange, let's create something fair that works for the both of us, boom, things are done and dusted and are sorted. And as well, make sure that communication is clear, as Stacey said before, because you want to make sure that the, there is a clear agreement, they know what's expected from the beginning. Because otherwise, people, then if they don't know what's expected, then you cannot even say something. It's like, Oh, I didn't know that it was part of the plan. So thank you, Stacey. Now, it's been an incredible interview. We are coming at the top of the hour. So uh, I, uh, my mind, you open, you really opened up my mind tonight. So thank you, thank you, thank you. Now, how can our listeners, uh, people that are listening to Explode Your Coaching Business Show, get in touch with you and what do you have for them? All right, well, what, what I would like to say is the website, of course, is chi, C-H-I-T-O-B-E.com. But what I have in store for people are my free attraction tips. And what I'm going to ask everybody to do is actually go to a different website first. And it's easy. It's beanattractionmaster.com. So B-E and attractionmaster.com, be an attractionmaster.com. There's a video there. I look pretty much like this on the video, so yeah. you'll know it's me. And I'm going to talk to you about how to develop your own strategic attraction plan there. If you decide that you want to go deeper into that process with me, the pricing, as you will see, is extremely inexpensive compared to what I've told you my private coaching is. Yeah. And, and if you choose not to do that, but you still want the attraction tips, there's a way to just get the attraction tips for free. 
So beanattractionmaster.com is the best place to go. Brilliant. Beanattractionmaster.com for the three attraction tips and the chi to be for getting the book. Make sure you get your copy of the book as well so that we can get chi to be become a number one New York Times bestseller because uh, we're going to get there, right? Thank you. Well, so I believe it. I am holding the vision and I know I attracted you to invite me for this, to be able to do that. And I, I look forward to hearing from everybody who's been watching us or on the replay. I, I, and you know that I think the world of you and I'm invested in your goals as well. So um, please, I, let me hear from you. That's fantastic. Thank you very much, Stacey. It's been a great having you in episode number 24 of Explode Your Coaching Business Show. Guys, thank you very much for those of you that have been listening so far. You are freaking awesome. Make sure you get in touch with Stacey and the links are going to be on the show notes and on the website. And as well, uh, make sure you subscribe so you don't miss any, any other episode of Explode Your Coaching Business Show. And as well, leave me a comment because with you, I can strive on comments. So if you want to help the podcast, make sure you leave us a comment. Stacey, thank you very much for being here tonight. You are awesome. Uh, right back at you. They take, says, it takes one to know one. So right back at you. Thank you. Uh, you make me blush. Okay. <laughs> thank you.